In question 14, I want you to determine whether these lines are parallel, perpendicular, or neither. So what happens is we're going to find the slope of Q to V. So find the slope. Remember, subtract your y's over subtract your x's. So I'm going to say 12 minus a negative 8 all over 5 minus a negative 3. 12 plus 8 is 20. 5 plus 3 is 8. I can simplify that. So I divide by 4. 20 divided by 4 is 5. 8 divided by 4 is 2. So you get 5 over 2 would be the slope of QV. Then I'm going to compare that to the slope of R to M. I'm going to go through the same thing. So R to M is going to be 2 minus 1 all over negative 5 minus a negative 2.5. 2 minus 1 is 1. Negative 5 plus 2.5 is negative 7.5. Well, can't have a decimal, so we're going to write that as negative 10 over 75. Notice I put my negative in the numerator, but it doesn't matter. A positive divided by negative is a negative. A negative divided by a positive is a negative. And I just noticed I did that wrong, didn't I? Let's try that again. Negative 5 plus 2.5 is negative 2.5. So that should be negative 10 over 25. Sorry about that. I added my head or subtract instead of added. Okay, then I can divide by 5, can't I? And I get negative 2 over 5. Notice they're opposite reciprocals. So these lines are perpendicular. We're going to do number 15 the same way. Let's start here. Let's find the slope of Q to V. So I'm going to say 9 minus 4.5. All over 4 minus a negative 2. 9 minus 4.5 is 4.5. 4 minus a negative 2 would be 6. 4.5 over 6 would be the same thing as 45 over 60. I can divide by 15 this time because 15 goes into both of those. 45 divided by 15 is 3. 60 divided by 15 is 4. So I get the slope of 3 fourths for Q to V. Let's turn around and let's find the slope of R to M. So this time I'll say negative 1.5 minus a negative 12. All over 10 minus a negative 4. Well, when you subtract a negative, you add. So I'm taking 12 minus 1.5. And that would be 10.5, wouldn't it? Because 10 minus, or 12 minus 1 is 11 minus another half gives us 10.5. 10 plus 4 would be 14. I'm going to get rid of the decimal. So I'm going to multiply by 10 to numerator and denominator. So we get 105 over 140. And let's see, what does that reduce to? Well, I definitely see 5 goes into both of them, doesn't it? And it's probably something more, but I'll start with 5. I might have to reduce this twice. So I take 105 and I divide that by 5. One oh five divided by 5 gives me 21. 140 divided by 5. 5. And I get 28. So I get 21 over 28. Well, I could have divided by 35. I would have been smart, but I didn't notice that. Oh, 
28. I wrote 21. So 21 divided by 7 is 3. 28 divided by 7 is 4. Notice the lines have the same slope. So they're parallel. Okay, now if we take a look on question 16. I want to state the postulate of theorem. Or first, I want to know what lines are parallel and then tell me why they're parallel. I'm told angle R and S, so let's mark that congruent. I'm going to blow that up here. So I have angle R and S, and that is congruent to angle PSN. Well, what lines, if any, are parallel because of these two angles? So that would make this line, if I could get... In this line, parallel. Now I wrote NU, but you could have just as wrote NR or RU. It is parallel to PV. And once again, you can use any two points on that line and be correct. And then why? Well, take a look because the alternate interior angles are congruent. That's what makes these lines parallel. 